The frame rate per second, or simply FPS, is one of the pillars of gaming. When I test handheld consoles, I make a point of displaying the FPS on the screen as a starting point for analysis. While 60 FPS is widely accepted as the standard for smoothness, there is a growing debate. Do higher rates, such as 120, 144, or even 400 FPS, make a noticeable difference? Based on scientific principles of physics and human perception, this video explores why we notice drops below 60 FPS in games, but have difficulty distinguishing gains above that or much higher, as we see in more recent cases. Well, the human perception of movement depends on the visual system and the brain. Studies indicate that the human eye detects changes in static images starting at 24 FPS, the cinema standard, when the illusion of continuous motion emerges. This phenomenon, called persistence of vision, explains why animations below 20 and 24 FPS in games appear to be stuck. Between 30 and 60 FPS, however, fluidity increases significantly. A 2014 study published in the Journal of Vision suggests that the brain processes images in about 13 milliseconds, equivalent to a theoretical 76 FPS. This implies that, to a certain extent, we can perceive differences above 60 FPS, but there is a practical limit. Below 60 FPS, drops are evident. At 30 FPS, the interval between frames is 33.3 milliseconds, enough for the brain to register inconsistencies such as stuttering or motion blur. In fast-paced games, such as shooters, this compromises accuracy and immersion. However, above 60 FPS, the gains diminish. At 120 FPS, the interval drops to 8.3 milliseconds, and at 144 FPS, to 6.9 milliseconds. The difference is subtle, and most people do not consciously distinguish this under normal conditions. Due to Weberfechner's law, the perception of change is proportional to the initial magnitude, making increments less noticeable at high rates. Psychophysical tests, such as those conducted by Claypool in 2009, show that the perception of fluidity saturates between 60 and 90 FPS for common visual tasks, such as following moving objects. The benefit is more temporal than perceptual. Each extra frame offers a more accurate reaction window, crucial in milliseconds. Still, for the casual gamer, the jump from 60 to 144 FPS in games is more psychological or placebo than physically evident. Now let's get into the physics of FPS and think about hardware and monitors or screens. The frame rate is limited by two physical factors, the graphics card's ability to render frames and the monitor's refresh rate, which determines how many frames are displayed per second. A GPU like the RTX 4090 can generate over 400 FPS in light games like Counter-Strike 2, but if the monitor is 60 Hz, only 60 frames will be displayed, wasting the surplus or causing screen tearing. 144 Hz or 240 Hz monitors are required to take advantage of higher rates, but even then, human perception reaches a plateau. Frame time, which is the time required to render each frame, also matters. At 60 FPS, the ideal frame time is 16.7 milliseconds. Sudden drops, from 60 to 30 FPS in games, for example, increase this value, creating noticeable inconsistencies. Stability above 60 FPS, such as between 120 and 144 FPS, reduces frame time in minimal increments which the brain rarely registers as a significant improvement outside of specific contexts, such as competitions. Achieving 400 FPS requires cutting-edge hardware. The RTX 4090 costs around $1,500, while its competitor, the AMD RX 7900 XTX, costs almost $1,000. These GPUs deliver exorbitant rates in optimized games, but the investment is questionable. In AAA titles, such as Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing, even these cards barely reach a good amount of FPS in 4K. In eSports, where 400 FPS is feasible, 360Hz or 540Hz monitors, such as the Asus ROG Swift Pro, cost around $800. The total cost can be quite high, 
something inaccessible to most consumers. Comparatively, an RTX 3060 delivers 60 and 120 FPS in modern games with adjustments, and 144Hz monitors cost less than $300. For the average gamer, this range is sufficient, raising the question of whether it is worth paying several times more for gains that we barely notice. Market data shows that only 15% of gamers on Steam use monitors above 144Hz, suggesting that extreme rates are a niche. However, frame rate goes beyond visual fluidity. In games, it impacts responsiveness. At 30 FPS, the delay between input and response on the screen is greater, affecting dynamic genres such as racing or shooting. At 60 FPS, this delay decreases, and at 144 FPS, it is almost imperceptible, benefiting eSports. In addition, high rates reduce motion blur on monitors with low persistence, such as OLEDs, but require robust GPUs to maintain consistency. Another point is stability. A game at 60 FPS with frequent drops to 40 FPS is worse than a constant 30 FPS, as the brain notices sudden variations more than absolute values. Technologies such as G-Sync and FreeSync mitigate this by synchronizing the monitor to the GPU, but they do not eliminate the need for hardware capable of sustaining the target FPS. Rates above 60 FPS are valuable in specific niches. For organized esports competitions, 144 or 240 FPS in games offer measurable advantages in competitions where every millisecond counts. Above that, such as 400 FPS, the return is marginal. Blind tests show that even experienced gamers confuse 144 FPS with 240 FPS under normal conditions and 400 FPS only stands out on very high-rate monitors, above 360 Hz, and ultra-fast games. Hardware marketing, however, pushes the narrative of more FPS, better experience. This ignores perceptual saturation and cost-effectiveness. This year, the quest for 400 FPS in games reflects more status and technological fanaticism than practical need. Science explains why drops below 60 FPS are so uncomfortable. The brain easily detects variations that break the fluidity. Above that, gains diminish, limited by the physics of vision and display technology. Rates much higher than that, while impressive, are a niche luxury, driven by expensive GPUs and specialized monitors, but with almost no perceptual impact for most people. For the average gamer, 60 FPS in games, with stable capacity and affordable hardware, offers the best experience. Discrepancies exist, but they don't always make a difference. I see people playing games, whether on their laptop or handheld console, and if the game doesn't reach 60 FPS, it seems like the fun is gone, so they keep tweaking the settings until they reach 60 FPS, and it seems to me like something implemented by the industry. Do you agree with this discussion about frame rate? Comment and thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and see you in the next video.